Tor and the Tor browser are incredibly useful projects that help thousands upon thousands of people every single day. They are what allow some people in the world to access the free and open internet. This isn't like VPN nonsense, but it doesn't really help anyone outside of basic geolocation stuff. This is fundamental to the way some people access the internet. And the other day over on Mastodon, I saw some people discussing a project from Tor called Snowflake. So I decided to go and check it out for you guys and see what it can do. So what Snowflake is, is one of the three current pluggable transports for Tor, otherwise known as Tor Bridges. The basic idea here is in many countries like Australia, the US, the UK, and places like that, where they're generally accepted to be fairly freedom-respecting countries, you can go and access the Tor network perfectly fine. There's no government oversight stopping you doing that. You're free to do so. But in many countries of the world, that's not the case. In many places, the Tor network functions perfectly fine, but you can't get onto the Tor network because the public entry points are blocked. So these bridges or pluggable transports are basically private entry points, and the way you combat censorship is you just have more of them. So the two older pluggable transports are OBFS4 and Meek. So OBFS4 basically makes traffic going through it look basically random. There's no pattern in the places that you are visiting. With Meek, it makes it look like you're going to a fairly popular website. Things like the Microsoft website, Google, Amazon, depending on what is available in that region. So if a government wanted to go and ban that, it would be a lot harder than just going and saying, oh, ban that domain because you take that entire massive service as collateral with it. And both of these have their use cases depending on the context they're being used in. In some regions, one works, not the other. Maybe it's because of the amount of load on it. Maybe it's because of the people who are actually running it and you're not able to connect to it for whatever reason. In some regions, one is actually automatically blocked and not the other. So having these options is always going to be a good thing. But if you're someone in a region that can help out and you want to go and self-host one of these, Self-hosting these isn't the easiest thing to do. If you know how to at least set up something like Nginx, sure you can make your way through the steps, but if you're not a super tech savvy person but you still want to help out, there's not really any way to do it with those solutions. That's where Snowflake comes in because it's so easy that literally anyone can do it. So if you want to run a Snowflake, there are currently three ways to do so. Firstly, you can go and download the extension. That's what I'm using right now. This is available for both Chromium and also Firefox. A link to it is available over on their website, and I'll leave it linked in the description down below. The other option is there's actually a web page you can open as well. So while you have this web page open, if you have the Snowflake turned on, then you will be running your Snowflake instance. So make sure you keep this page open the entire time you want to run it. But if you're a more tech-savvy person and you don't want it to exist in your browser, there is a standalone Snowflake you can run as well. I haven't gone through the steps for this, but you can just set it up with a Docker container, so it seems like it's pretty straightforward to do. But even so, it is still a little bit more complicated than just running an add-on. Before you download the extension and help out, you probably want to know how it works and what it's actually doing. So you probably know that WebRTC is the basis for much of the real-time communication we do on the web. That is also being used in the case of Snowflake. And your Snowflake instance is going to act as a proxy. Now, if someone wants to go and use Snowflake, what they need to do is tell their Tor browser use Snowflake as my bridge, but then they have a problem. They need to find out where the Snowflakes are located. So this is done through a service called a broker. This is a service running on a third-party server, hiding itself using the same technology that Meek does called domain fronting to make it seem like it's coming from some other service, so blocking it isn't really that easy. So this service knows where these snowflakes are located and will distribute them to the clients trying to connect to the network. So once a client has received their snowflake, then they will attempt to establish a peer-to-peer -peer connection with it through WebRTC. Now there may come a time where due to the connections being made to that snowflake, it gets discovered that that's what it is. It is a Tor relay, and if that country doesn't like Tor relays, they're probably going to go and block it. 
When that happens, the broker is going to find the user a new snowflake and they can go about their day. This is why it's important you have many of these snowflakes to make it so even if a hundred or a thousand of them are blocked, there are so many more that blocking all of them becomes basically impossible. Once that connection has been established, then the data will be routed through that snowflake and then sent onto the rest of the Tor network through a WebSocket. And due to this not being an exit node, basically the point where you leave the Tor network, the final IP address on these data packets will not be the IP address of your instance, which in many cases will be your home IP address unless you're running it through a VPN. However, if you are in an oppressive region, which may not block Tor, but doesn't particularly like Tor, I wouldn't take any risk with trying to run your own snowflake. And due to in many cases the questionably legal, or in some cases straight up illegal activity going on on the Tor network, there have been some instances of people running Tor exit nodes who have been in legal trouble, having things like their hardware and their server and all that stuff seized. You're not running an exit node, you are just running a Tor relay. From my understanding, no one has ever been in legal trouble except, you know, in regions that don't like Tor for doing so. That's not legal advice, and if you don't feel comfortable doing so, there are other ways you can support the Tor project. If you've accepted the potential risks that may exist and you decide to use the extension, as you're using it, you're going to see that you'll be given some basic metrics. Nothing like how much data is being sent or who is connecting or anything like that, but it will tell you if someone is currently connected and then how many people have connected in the past 24 hours. In my case, so far two people have connected. And don't be worried if you've left it running for an hour, two hours, or maybe even more, and nobody has connected to the snowflake. This is perfectly normal, especially right now, because recently, this is why people were talking about it. Tor was doing a sort of, I guess, recruitment drive to get more people to run their own instance. So in many cases, it's very likely there are more instances than the number of people trying to connect to one of them. Now, if you don't feel comfortable running your own instance, but you still want to go and help out the Tor project, obviously all of the regular FOSS methods work as well. You can donate your time in the form of writing documentation and code, or you can just donate a bit of money. And if you're interested in a full technical explanation of how Snowflake functions, I will leave a link to the technical overview along with a thesis explaining how that works. And that's going to be it for me. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Are you going to go and run your own Snowflake or maybe you've already been running one for the past couple of years? I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon subscribers only be able to pay in the description down below i've got a podcast called tech over t a gaming channel called brody robson plays that's gonna be it for me and i'm out